Hi, I'm Professor Geraint Jones. Uh, I work at uh, University College London's Mullard Space Science Laboratory. So um, we're a space science laboratory, part of a university that builds instruments, sends them to space, similar to what happens here at IAA. Uh, my area of expertise is uh, planetary science. So done a bit on outer planets, uh, but um, mostly comets at the moment. It's important to study comets uh, because they're the leftovers from when the solar system was born. So the Earth and the other planets have been here for about uh, four and a half billion years. What created them was lots of gas and dust coming together and some pieces were left behind. And the pieces that are left behind are asteroids, which are mostly rocky, uh, but also comets, which have more ice in them. So when comets uh, come close to the sun, the ices melt, we see the gases and the dust coming off, and that ice and dust is extremely old. So if we learn more about uh, comets, how they're made, um, what the structure is, we learn more about what the conditions were like at the beginning of the solar system. When we study comets, we can learn a lot looking from the ground through big telescopes. Um, but to really study them in detail, we need to send spacecraft to them. When uh, Comet Halley, probably the most famous comet, came around in the 1980s, there were missions from several different countries, the Soviet Union, Japan, and also the European Space Agency's first uh, planetary mission was Giotto, which went to Comet Halley. And those missions told us a huge amount about um, these, uh, these objects. Uh, since then, we've had other missions to comets. So some from NASA have hit a comet to see how strong it is. Uh, another one has brought back a sample of dust. Uh, and of course, there was the Rosetta mission, which was a huge success, a European Space Agency mission, uh, which traveled out to a comet and traveled with it as it came closer to the sun. So as the nucleus the, at the heart of the comet got warmer, the ices were melting, Rosetta looked at the gas and the dust and told us a great deal about uh, that. Comet Interceptor is different because we want to go to a comet which has not been uh, near the sun before. So we ideally, if we can, go to a comet which was formed um, before the Earth and the other planets were formed, but was then thrown out far away from the sun and we want to see one of those comets coming back. The comet that Rosetta went to had been heated many times going around the sun, and so it looks different now to how it was to begin with. We want to go to a, a new comet. Now, the problem with this is that uh, we need to know where a comet is before we send a spacecraft. But the new comets that are coming in for the first time, uh, we don't know where they'll be in the future. So we don't know which comets we're going to yet. We haven't discovered it. So Comet Interceptor will go into space. And if we haven't already found the comet we're going to, it will wait for uh, up to three or four years um, for us to find a comet from the ground. And then once we find our target, we'll send it to it. So Comet Interceptor hopes to solve questions about what comets looked like to begin with. So we've seen Comet Halley and uh, many others now fairly close up from different spacecraft. And Rosetta um, even soft landed on the surface of a comet with a feli lander. Um, but um, all those comets have been around the sun many times. So we want to see a, a fresh well, okay, this is, it's an old comet, but one that hasn't been changed by the heat of the sun. Maybe the surface of the comet will look very different to the Rosetta target comet. Maybe the gases that come off, maybe they'll be different because some gases, they, um, they're released very easily by heat. So if you have a comet that's been around many times, maybe that, all that gas is gone. One very uh, unique thing about Comet Interceptor, it's not one spacecraft, it's three. So we have a main spacecraft from Europe and also two small spacecraft. One is being provided by Japan and the other one is a European one as well. A few days before reaching the comets, the two small probes will leave 
the main spacecraft, and so the three of them will go past the comet together. We can only fly past this comet. We can't stop, we can't land. But if we have three spacecraft, we'll have different views of the nucleus, um, and they'll be able to measure how the comet um, interacts with the solar wind, which is this flow of material from the sun. Um, so there is a, an instrument called a magnetometer on each one. It's like a compass showing which way is north. Um, so if we have three measurements in a line, we can see how the magnetic field of the sun interacts with the, the comet. So it's very exciting. It's going to be carrying out new observations like that that we haven't done on any of the comets before. Designing a spacecraft um, that can travel to lots of different comets at different speeds. For example, the Giotto spacecraft, when it went to Comet Halley, we knew it would go past uh, on the 13th of March, 1986. We knew where the Earth was, where Comet Halley was, and it was designed with the, the dish sending signals to Earth pointing in the right direction. And with a dust shield, so when it was going past the comet at high speed, it was protected from the dust. The Comet Interceptor, we want to do the same thing. We, we need, need a dust shield, uh, and we also want to communicate with the Earth as well. Uh, but we don't know where in the sky the comet will be. We don't know how fast we're going through the comets. Um, so, yeah, one of the challenges is designing a spacecraft that can go to many different types of comets. Um, some comets give off very little gas and dust. Others give off a lot. Uh, and also the flyby speed can be very different as well. Um, all these flybys uh, will be fast, so the slowest will be around 10 kilometers per second, but it could be as fast as 70 kilometers per second. And so the spacecraft has to be able to cope with um, a big range of uh, flyby speeds. One thing we probably won't be able to do is send back thousands of pictures in real time. The, the spacecraft will send some data back as we're going past the comets, but most of it will be stored on board. And then after the flyby, the data will be sent back to Earth for weeks after the, uh, the encounter has happened. Well, I think it would depend on uh, yeah, the results we get from Comet uh, uh, Interceptor. Um, one thing um, that we would really like to do is to go to a comet from outside our solar system. So it's, Comet Interceptor could do this if we do find a comet at the right time in the right position, um, but we would have to be incredibly lucky uh, to do that. So if Comet Interceptor hasn't done that, and we've learned a lot about a fresh comet that hasn't been close to the sun before, I think after that it would be going to an interstellar comet that would be extremely exciting to do. But it's very challenging. At the moment, we only know of two objects like this, and they were discovered yeah, with not much advance notice, so it would be difficult to, to get to them. But uh, yeah, one day I'm sure we'll visit a comet from another star going through our solar system, and we'll be able to compare that comet with uh, what we have here uh, in our solar system.